Hi guys. So <clears throat> my last video, I mentioned that I would talk about solar. So when I left British Columbia, I was sold a system. I had a hundred watt solar panel, a 20 amp controller, um, a thousand watt inverter, and a 24 volt liquid acid battery. And I was reassured that it would be enough to be living off grid, um, not, not for an extended time, but for a couple of days. Um, my concern was running a bar fridge, uh, 120 volt. Um, well, that's if you plug it in. But he assured me that the system that I had would be enough to run a bar fridge, just a small one, and um, propane heat. And it was great all summer long in Canada with the sun, full sun. And even when I dropped down into the States, it was fine up until I got to about New Mexico in November. Then I started having issues where I would have no power. Um, unless I was driving, then I would obviously have power. Um, but when I was stopped for the night, I would wake up and my fridge would not be working. So before I left British uh, BC, the guy explained to me that if I wanted to run more power, I would need two batteries. So I went and I bought a second battery. So when he came to hook up the system, I said, oh, here's the second battery. And he looked at me and he says, oh, well, I can't install it. I said, well, you said I needed two batteries. And he said, yes, but you don't have an enclosed case for it and it emits, um, sends off gases and he wouldn't be able to put it underneath the bed. My van is equipped with a um, auxiliary battery that has its own home on the outside of the van. So I left with this second battery. So I went to visit a friend in Calgary and I had mentioned um, that I would like, um, you know, to run a toaster because I was missing toast in the morning. And he said to me, he said, well, I have a 5,000 watt inverter. So he hooked up the second battery to the 5,000, I don't even know what exactly what he did, to be quite honest. I'm trying to think. He took, he hooked up the 5,000 watt inverter and the second battery. And unfortunately, because we had fires and it was cloudy, the system was not working. <laughs> I've had quite a few issues with solar. So when I left New Mexico, I made it all the way to Yuma and I was still having issues with the battery and power, et cetera, et cetera. And me being new at this, I wasn't sure what to do. And I kept on asking questions and Googling and what have you. And to be quite honest, it was way above with the amps, voltage, wattage, etc. And to be quite honest, I don't have a desire to learn. I have had people send me the equations and what have you, and it's not something I really, I'd much rather have somebody that's knowledgeable, just do it and do it correctly. So when I was in Yuma, um, actually, sorry, I was actually in Y, Arizona. It was before I got to Yuma. 
there was a guy that was willing to look at the system and all I said was, I want to put back to the original system. So the battery, the one battery was actually dead. There was no charge left to it. So he took that battery out and the other battery was not actually being used at all. So he put that battery in and he took the 5,000, 5,000 watt inverter out and put the 1,000 inverter back in, but it still was not working correctly. So when I was in Y, Arizona, there were a few people that were saying, um, and they were long-termers, they you know, boondocking and um, <clears throat> there for the summer and what have you, or sorry, winter, summer here for us Canadians. Um, <clears throat> anyhow he he said that what he does is he unplugs his fridge at night so I started doing that and it was actually working better so I did have the second battery looked at um, the one that the fellow took out that was not working and actually they recharged it and um, and these were 24 volt liquid acid batteries. I have never heard about an AGM. I have heard about lithium, but they were out of my price range. So I, there was no way that I would be able to buy lithium at the time. So anyhow, <laughs> um, I had heat. And during the daytime, when the sun was out, I had a fridge. So I would just unplug the fridge at night and it worked. And when I got to Yuma, I thought like, I'm going north. I can't do this. I have to ensure that I have heat and that I have fridge to put my food in. And another thing too, the fellow that did the solar in British Columbia. He did a propane check and I didn't question him and I should have, I should have at the time, I didn't. Anyhow, that's besides the point. It's too late now. So originally there was a propane, propane fridge. Right away he said, no, the propane's no good. You got to go. It, you know, you're better off going with a propane propane fridge or a bar fridge rather sorry electrical and as I said I didn't question it I believed as I said I have faith in people and I believe that they tell me the truth and you know so anyhow I went and I bought a bar fridge and he got rid of the propane and ever since I've been in the states people say oh no you should have kept the propane fridge but it's too late. Live and learn. And another one was a 12 volt fridge, which I'm still not 100% sure exactly what that is. But um, I guess there are other options for a fridge. The bar fridge is working great. And I love the space. To be quite honest, I do. I don't have a big freezer, but the fridge um, and I just went to, I can't remember, Home Hardware. It's Master Chef. I did Google and research the different bar fridges. And this one, I think I paid like 150 bucks. It was reasonable. And it's been working most of the time when I have solar. So anyhow, when I was in Yuma, I decided to put out there that I needed somebody to help me with the solar. Um, luckily, a guy did respond and he was very pleasant. Brad, um, with solar air, I'll give him a little plug in Yuma. Um, he, uh, I brought the van to him because he was at his dad's. I was on um, BLM land in Yuma. And um, <clears throat> so, he told me, he says, you never should have been sold the system. He says, for what you're doing, he says, it would not have lasted. 
So I don't remember exactly how much I paid, but it was enough. I don't know. It was I know it was under 2000, but it was up there still. So he got, oh, another thing too, I should mention too, when I was in Y, Arizona, um, you know, a lot of people were saying, well, just add more solar. And it's like, okay, so there were a lot of people in Y that had extra solar panels. But then the guy that was doing the hookup, he said, well, no, you can't mix and match. You have to have the same type of solar panel. And again, I have to take it at face value because I don't know. So, and he was the one who was hooking it up and he said, I'm not comfortable doing that mixing and matching. So he, he just wouldn't do it because I was offered uh, like a 275 watt and mixing it with 100 watt. He said, no, that won't work. He says, if you were going with 100 and 100 with the same voltage and ampage, and yes, that would work, but no. So anyhow, I didn't go that right route, even though the solar panel would have been free. <laughs> so anyhow, I get to Yuma, I meet Brad, and um, he upgraded me um, to a hundred two hundred and seventy five watt panels. So now I have three fifty. A new AGM 100 amp and um, I was a little concerned because it's underneath my bed and he says no with an AGM they don't um, release gases. I wish I would have known that before I left British Columbia because that's the route I would have went. But the guy didn't he just he just said no just buy a regular battery and I think it's because I have as I said a auxiliary holder for a battery and that was the battery that he was going to use and behind the fridge I do have space for another battery and that's where the second battery was sitting but anyhow it's too late now as I said and then I still have the thousand watt inverter and now I'm hearing well the thousand watt inverter is not um there's not a lot of power attached to it so i have been looking at 3000 watt but now i have a thousand watt inverter and a 5000 watt inverter and do i really want to buy a 3000 watt inverter too the 5000 watt inverter is not hooked up I'd be willing to trade if somebody <laughs> wants a 5,000 watt inverter for a 3,000 watt. Just give me a message. I'm willing to trade. Um, yeah, so anyhow, and I have a new controller, which is a 30 amp MPPT, and it seems to be working. Mind you, I am a little concerned because I am going north. Um, mind you, I would always revert back to unplugging the fridge at night in order to have heat if I need. And I do have a little buddy heater, a little, yeah, little buddy, not Mr. Buddy, but a little buddy. And it throws off a lot of heat. The only thing that I don't like about it is because when it's real cold, wow in terms of here, not minus 20 in Canada, but um, say four degrees here, three, four. With the little buddy, I found that I was going through a canister, which here, a one pound tank of propane here is $5, even if you buy them in multiples. So it does get expensive. It lasts three days. So I'd much rather use the propane in my tank because it's, I can fill up with less. So, but yes, my solar panel has been an issue and I've learned a lot about it and I still don't know a lot, but I'm learning. 
and uh, when I get back to Canada, I don't know, maybe I will upgrade one more time, but I, I don't know, I met a fellow um, in Quartzsite, um, and he was staying at the High Jolly, and he said that he has 200 watt solar with a 3000 watt inverter. And I said to him, I said, well, I was told that that was too much. And he said, no. And I believe, I don't remember what type of battery he had. And I know battery does make a lot of, a big difference. But yeah, I'm still learning. Oh well. Anyhow, I hope that I can reach a few people out there in regards to solar. Be careful on what you purchase and make sure that it is going to be enough. And I know there's, I mean, I've met people that have, oh my God, 1500 watts and, you know, six lithium batteries and what have you, and more power to you if you have the money. But if you do not have the money, then what, right? I just want something basic that's gonna work, that's within my, my budget. So, but yes, 100 watt panel was not enough with everything. And in my opinion, I would not go with liquid acid. I find the AGM because you can put it in house is a lot better. Mind you, it is, I think it was 13 inches long and it's heavy. <laughs> like there's no way I would have been able to lift it. So anyhow, if you have a 3000 watt inverter that you want to trade, let me know. Okay. Thank you. Like, and subscribe. Bye for now.